This is Neil from Roscoe Electric. We're in University City Heights. This woman is selling this house and she has knob and tube just like most of the homes in this neighborhood. And somehow between the realtor and talking to different people, she determined that knob and tube might be an issue for sale. Uh, knob and tube itself is something we'll talk about when we get inside, but this is an issue for people selling homes and insurance companies and buyers. It's, it's not something that has to be, you know, prevent you from buying or selling a home, but you know, every home in the neighborhood is like this. So it's a good system for when it was installed and it's got some issues. And if it's been tampered with, that's one of the big issues and insurance companies. But like I said, we'll discuss that a little more inside. This home's a little unique with the garage under the basement here. Concrete ceiling. And luckily it's an unfinished basement, so the knob tube is all accessible. So we can kind of separate knob and tube into a couple categories. One is the horizontal runs that are in the basement where they're accessible, luckily here, and then in the attic where they're to the light fixtures. And then all the vertical runs. And it's like a central nervous system. So there's old Western Union splices that are luckily soldered inside the walls and they're all not known to fail. So that part of the system is usually pretty solid. Down here is where sometimes it's been tampered with. Uh, so we're kind of doing a great deal of cleanup. This is not my panel. Someone else did this voodoo here. So we're cleaning up stuff that he had ripped out and you kind of do it piecemeal, you know, a little bit of section at a time, but unfortunately he tore everything out. So we're having to do some analysis. And I can show you a junction box over here that we took care of. So again, we're kind of, you know, doing a job for her where we're going ahead and we're replacing the lights because the way, the way he'd done the junction boxes like this was kind of poorly done and the wrong size wire, a couple other things. So we're getting all new wires to the lights and setting her up. And then over here is a good example. So here we are in the corner of the basement where we've run the new 15 amp cable to these junction boxes and replaced the sections of knob and tube and spliced it. So these are the horizontal runs that we replaced. And the difficulty becomes tying into the vertical runs. So this is where the vertical run goes upstairs. Kind of usually the exterior ones are set in masonry, which is even more problematic to replace. So we just splice into it and We've got a non-grounded system, but this is all new grounded, but we just tie into that and check polarity later uh, if it's not been labeled properly. And so this is just your modern blue boxes, nail-ons, and so we make our junctions where all the verticals occur. So we're here outside showing you what the knob and tube looks like. It's much nicer out here than the basement. So this is why they call it knob and tube. These are your knobs, these are your tubes. These are all the ceramic things. What these are is when it goes through a wood framing member, it prevents it from uh, having contact with combustible materials. So these, new these tubes need to be in attack. So sometimes they're broken or they're slipped out. So you want to make sure that they're covering the uh, insulator between the conductor and the wood. This is the knob that is the support that runs it in all the different places. So this holds that and this is where it goes. Uh, this wire actually looks a little white. Uh, this is an early generation that, that doesn't indicate that it's a neutral or a ungrounded conductor. Uh, this proceeds when they started doing black and white conductors, which is really helpful when they started doing that. On these, you can't tell the polarity unless you, you know, examine which is the hot. So this is why it's knob and tube. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts of my job. I get to see a variety of places and, and people's homes and things that they value. And this is one of the most beautiful gardens I've been in. But back to knob and tube. So knob and tube in and of itself is not a bad system. As an electrician, it's a good system when it was installed. You know, all the connections inside the walls are Western Union splices and generally soldered, and I've never known them to fail. Um, what happens is insurance companies have issues with it because they have their actuary tables and their risk assessment. So I'm not sure that's entirely fair. You know, this neighborhood is almost all Namba tube. So any of the homes of this generation, whether the St. Louis City or U City or anywhere with Namba tube, all your neighbors have Namba tube. What happens is the insurance companies want you to claim or to declare that you have some knob and tube. There's a couple different ways to deal with that. I like to suggest that you do it from a percentage standpoint, because oftentimes an original home will only have four, six, eight circuits that are knob and tube, whereas a new home will have 20, 30 circuits. So sometimes your percentage of knob and tube could actually be low, even though there's a great deal of knob and tube in the home. What we do is oftentimes when people get scared enough or for different reasons, we replace the knob and tube that we have access to. Because for some reason, insurance companies are satisfied if they can't see it. So we take those horizontal areas and replace them, generally in the basement. It's actually 
from an electrician standpoint, superficial, because we've now taken this almost 100-year-old system and added a bunch of splices to it. So it just looks better, but it's actually been interrupted in all the different places. But that does keep them happy, and we do it quite often to satisfy buyers and insurance companies to help lower premiums. Uh, rewiring the entire home is typically not something that's a reasonable cost-effective solution because you have to open walls and you can only fish so much. So that's normally not done. Um, again, it's not something to be scared of. It's a good system. It's uh, able to carry more current because it's open air, less likely to short. The splices are soldered. You know, when they were installing that stuff a long time ago, they did a really generally excellent job. The caution is to examine it if it's been tampered with so that the ceramic knobs and tubes, that's why they call it that, are in good condition. It hasn't been spliced into it. It hasn't deteriorated from conditions or pests or any other weird reasons. And that's something we do quite often to just examine it and people make people feel more comfortable about the system that they have in their home. But I wouldn't uh, hesitate to purchase a home with knob and tube or to uh, deal with a buyer or an insurance company. And it's a good system.